Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Little Revolution. I'm Wee Man, and I am Poncho. What's up, guys? How are you? It's our show again. Yes, it is our show. It's not yours. We're in the same spot. It's not (laughs) mine. It's not yours. It's ours. Ours. Poncho has some big news to share with everybody today. Because, uh, well, yeah, my big news is, uh, tomorrow, actually, August 16th is my nine year anniversary with my wife. Yep. And so, yeah, we made it that long, which is actually like 18 years here in Los Angeles. I've heard. True. Yeah. True. But, um, (laughs) we've made it that long (laughs) and we decided to get matching tattoos and she only has one tattoo. I have other, I have more. Yeah. But so we got the, the jackass tattoo. Yeah. The jackass uh tattoo and not because i'm on your dick you are my friend <laughs> but i got it because we, we it was our first date yeah when we met like i i was on a traveling broadway show and i asked her i and i was asking around if anyone wanted to go see the movie with me it was in 2010 yeah and no one would come no one would come to see this movie you kind of swindled her yeah is what it sounds like yeah. into a first date uh, and you used your wingman. Yeah, I used my help, wingman to help you to help me. And she <laughs> was the only one that would come. And I was dry heaving the whole time because it was fucking disgusting. But I just couldn't get <laughs> enough of it. And then we had a blast. And then afterwards, we went and had pizza at a dive bar. This was a Myrtle Beach that was connected to a strip club, the big strip club called Secrets. Uh, wow. So that was our first date because I found out the next day that this was on November first. And it went, uh, and then the date went on to November second. Yep, and that was her birthday. Yeah. Dang! So it was meant to be. So I got the the jackass tattoo, and oh. then I got the date of our our marriage, of our wedding. And you just so happened to get it in the same place that I have my jackass tattoo. Yeah. And when people come up to me and they're kind of questionable if it's me, yeah. they're like, "Oh yeah, but you have the jackass tattoo." Yeah. Now you're really gonna get. No, 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 mean. because I have it on my wedding hand. I don't really wear a wedding ring too much, and neither does she. <laughs> That's not going to make a difference to people out there. People are Well, it makes be- a difference to me, Jason. <laughs> 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 so the jackass logo is now your wedding ring. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how like, oh, well, it's, babe, it's we're a married. Reminder, Come it's on. a reminder that I'm still married. <laughs> so no, when, you're out, <laughs> when you're out and about... And chicks don't see a wedding ring. Oh, oh, but wait, he has a jackass tattoo. He's taken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is too good. Yeah, it's okay. gold. Well, enough about so, me. <laughs> all right. So our our guest for today is pretty awesome. All right. I've known her for a little bit. I don't really know her. Kind of more like um Acquaintances? Like, yeah, acquaintances. Okay. Through motorcycles. The yeah. first time I ever met her, I was going to Rolling Sands to check on my motorcycle and she was there and she's a bike builder oh she's gnarly that's awesome yeah she's probably gonna kick your ass i read a little bit about her you did you checked you checked on her you did your homework ass yeah i did my homework well everybody we want to welcome to little revolution our first female guest becky gable becky gable yes what's up come on in (laughs) how you doing hi hey how are you Good meeting you. Nice to meet you guys. I get to go in here. In the yep. Middle. You get to be right between the two midges. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, Becky. Well, welcome to the show. Thanks, thanks for having me. Thanks for cruising down. This is a longtime friend of mine, yes. yeah, Poncho nice Muller. Yes, hi. Nice to meet you, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you look scared of me for a second there. No, I just look sleepy, and uh-huh. I'm always look like this. Just yeah. a little sad. Oh, uh, sad. <laughs> just... So pathetic. <laughs> no, you're good, but okay. you're not sad and pathetic. Yeah, no, no. Cool. Don't be don't right. be scared. Let's let's do this. Let's I know lots this. of you... sad and pathetic guys. You're okay. not one. All right, good. good. Are you good to go? Are you ready? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think we're so. live, bro. We are live. This is hot. <laughs> let's do it. Okay. Becky, for the people out there in T V land, podcast world, radio, whatever, that don't know you, that are like, Oh my god, wow, this is Becky. What what does she do? They said motorcycles and stuff. Can you give a small explanation to the world? Um, yeah, it's a little complicating. My, I never planned to be what I am right now, but I am. I like to say I'm a professional 
motorcyclist because I pretty much everything that is my job revolves around motorcycles. So building them, riding them. I ride bikes in a lot of the Harley Davidson ads, um, in the background, a lot of movies, TV shows. I do lots of like brand deals, Instagram stuff, like influencer stuff with motorcycle tire companies, helmet companies, things like that. And then I build bikes a little bit. It's kind of like a hobby really. Cause I never was like wanting to be a bike builder, but just through like projects that I was doing, it kind of just led up to building a bike to race and building a bike for born free, which is like a big chopper show. And, uh, yeah, now it kind of led into building a brand. So now I work on my, uh, brand that revolves around women That's, motorcyclists. That is so. awesome. I read, I read that, uh, you own five bikes. Did you build all five of them? No. Um, I own nine bikes oh, at nine the moment, bikes. actually. Um, God damn, damn it, Wikipedia. Do Wrong! <laughs> <laughs> Update your Google, buddy. <laughs> well, every day changes. Like, <laughs> yeah. la last month, I think I bought two, okay. and then I sold one, and then... Like I'll, I took one apart last week and it's literally like gone now. So I think that means I don't have that one. Are they all Harleys? Um, no, I have a, I have a newer Royal Enfield that I raced, um, and built and I have an old Honda like scooter thing mm. and I have a Yamaha XT 500 from the seventies and then the rest are mostly Harleys, but all types like I have an old Harley Panhead chopper, and then I also have like a newer Dyna, which is like a LA city ripper kind of oh, thing. That's pretty awesome. Now, when you and Jason met, Jason was getting a bike custom made for him. Yeah. yeah. That's how you guys met in that same shop. Right? Yeah. yeah. Ro the boys were actually building your bike like beside the bike I was building. Yep. And so I kind of watched them do that. And the same with your dirt bike. Yeah. A dirt bike's being built right now, too. Is that a dirt bike? Done yeah. yet? I think it's almost done. It's getting ready to go to paint. Oh, okay. And then it, it should be all finished up. Yeah. So I have a street bike and a dirt bike. I own two bikes now, Ponch. That's pretty so cool. So keep track yeah, of that. Yeah, but you didn't Take build them, so. <laughs> no, nope. well, so I did not like, build. Uh, I am not baller. a bike builder. I never put that on my resume or anything. No, he shows up at RSD. He's like, my license plate mount fell off. <laughs> help me. It did. <laughs> Please yeah. help. Yeah. <laughs> All I know how to do is put gas and go. Yeah, that's a baller <laughs> status, though. That's what's up. <laughs> um, so the reason I contacted Becky was in my neighborhood, there's this uh, bus bench <laughs> ad uh, for motorcycles. I think it might have even been insurance or something like that. It was, a, it was an ad, but it had a motorcycle person fully like riding. It was a real close up. I'm like, oh, my God, Becky got an ad. It's in my neighborhood. I'm going to take a picture and say, hey, Beck, you know. And I go, is this you? Like, just, and she goes, nope. But it's the same look. So Becky runs this, like, open face helmet look with, like, I call them beetle glasses, John Travolta glasses. And the person had the same look. And, I, and she's like, no. I'm like, oh, wow. They totally, like, didn't, they, they knew Becky would be a little pricey <laughs> to have in her ads. But they're like, we want this look. But we don't want to pay for it. <laughs> so let's just get some rando. It, do, it did look like me. Yeah. yeah. So it was like, like a ripoff version. How did it all start for you? Like, were, were, you, were you a tomboy as a kid when, when you were growing up? Like, did you, did, were your parents writers? Did it, did kind of like, did it pass on to you? Um, yeah. I grew up in the prairies in Canada. Like okay. in a farmland, super small town vibe. Really? Yeah. And like, like, okay. So the prairies, where is that? Oh, um, like. I'm from 14 hours north of the border of North Dakota. Oh, shit. So flatlands, <laughs> super cold winters, super hot summers, dry, farm, yeah. like flat. Farm girl. Yeah, like the shitty part of Canada okay. where when people say you're from there, you're like, oh, that okay. sucks. But um, <laughs> Sucks for you. <laughs> <laughs> and like a super humble family, like my dad worked at the pulp mill kind of shit. And like your neighbor has a crappy golf cart and like your dad brings home like a car that's got the top chopped off of it. And you just kind of like drive things and ride things around, you know, and my dad, he is a biker like I've always yeah. had motorcycles around and my grandpa both grandpas on both sides ride my wow. mom rides my gr both grandmas ride or rode at some point and like just 
writing things, driving things was always kind of in normal for me and all the people around me in my life. Like just the, I drove the lawnmower around, you know, at like super so young. So is your entire family back in Canada? Um, like yeah. Like in this farm town where everything's super open and quiet? Uh, my parents now live in a cool mountain town in British okay. Columbia, but I never lived there. Well, um, I'm sure they probably worry about you because now you're like in this city, this clusterfuck, and you're riding a motorcycle, <laughs> which is yeah. kind of dangerous. But, you know, yeah. you got this. Yeah, I'm like, I, I, people don't really realize, but I'm very much like an immigrant that just moved here, that grew up in a different country, <laughs> you know? You pretty much are, but it's it's part of north america yeah but like it's different you know like i i truly you know i talk the same and i look the same but like where i'm from is a lot different than here and like yeah. i'm still figuring out how to live here and like how to not get kicked out and shit you know like wait are you do you have a green card or something no i don't have a green card <laughs> but are you, I, on, are you on a visa yeah i'm on a visa you are on a visa yeah but it's a is it work visa yeah it's a o1 special ability work visa so Whoa. it's like the same visa that like a model or a singer or something would have so it's mm -hmm. like you don't work for a certain company you just you can work freelance for in in your field so my field is literally like motorcycle marketing yeah yeah. So she straight up, couple questions. How did you meet Roland, first off? And then second, my buddy Roland gets a new building, Roland Sands, gets a new building, and <laughs> Becky just goes, oh, yeah, that area right there of your new building, that's going to be my shop. Oh, that's so Claims cool. it, calls it out, and set up a whole shop just for herself <laughs> in it. I do that with Roland all the time. I, like when I was building that bike in his shop, I just didn't have my own tools or my own shop. So I was like, Roland, I'm building this at your shop. Like I'll take you on Instagram or something, but yeah. like I need to do this somewhere. Okay. So I just kind of like take advantage of our friendship all the time. Um, <laughs> I've noticed. I've me. noticed. Like he needs women incorporated in his brand and stuff. So he'll be like, can you, we use you for the shoot or like, you know, yeah. shit like that. We, we trade off. But I met him at this uh, influencer event for Toyota back in the day it was called hotel tacoma and they just brought like a hundred influencers out to this remote location and like he was there but i didn't really know him and like andy bell was there yeah. and uh a couple of random like super random people but uh yeah one night we just like did some mushrooms and like we're in this hot tub and roland was if you know roland he's like the most hyper like 45 year old like hyper child like he's 12 years old so yeah. <laughs> it was like six in the morning and this guy was just like Wah! and i was like and, we're gonna be friends <laughs> and then did it did the earth get flat in the jacuzzi not at that time the <laughs> earth is getting flatter every day i know him but uh i saw you guys what is that what does that mean the earth get flat? uh so roland sands is a flat earther okay and the oh, first day i, I, I met him we were camping up in big sur and he came with his family and stuff and we had a fire pit going everybody's drinking and partying and everybody started going to sleep and it was just me and him left and we he started talking yeah you know there's and i'm like there's not flat yeah it is like we got into a full battle over the earth being flat not flat and then his his wife came out wasted and just put him to bed <laughs> but when she came out she pretty much almost fell into the fire pit <laughs> oh, damn. like would have like had massive burns but caught herself grabbed roll and threw him to bed and i was like all right this is great and the next day i was like you know what they have their family thing going on i'm just gonna hit the road <laughs> but ever since then after that we became really good friends That's so so I, I hear that you uh, do you have a nick your, your nickname's Axel? Yeah. yeah and, and is that have has that been since you were a kid? Um, I went to Mexico with two of my homegirls when I was like 21 and we decided to make up fake names to uh, tell dudes at the bar <laughs> and at the hostel <laughs> just like, you know, uh, be incognito for a couple of days and do whatever we want. And uh, on the way home, we all changed our Instagram names. And it was like, actually, it's Tika. Coco, it's actually. And actually, it's Axel. And then, like, I never, I never, I had, like, 500 Instagram followers at oh, the really? time. So it just stuck around. And now it's my entire fucking identity. But it works because, like, when someone sees you on the street or something, you know. Like, yeah. if they're, like, Axel or, like, yeah. Wee Man, you know you, like, it's don't actually know them. Yeah. 
Or if you gave them your number and they just told them your na fake name and then they te text you, you're like, oh, I don't respond to this text, you know? <laughs> do, do, like, is that the same for you, Jason? Because I, I feel weird if I call you Wee Man. Because you're my bro. We're but friends. Like, but, That's like, when, whenever you're on the show, that they're, they're all your buddies are calling you Wee Man. Is that, but like when you guys aren't filming, are, is everyone like Steve O and everyone call you Jason? Or yeah. is it just Wee Man? Uh, some, some call me Wee Man and some call me Jason. Okay. It all depends. <laughs> and it mainly like, it's stuck because everybody's like, no, call, call each other by nicknames for, and it's stuck. And they are my bros and stuff, but they'll still call me like, yeah, cause know. even when we were standing up front, like the fire, the fireman truck drove by us and they're like, Wee Man. And it was like, Yes. We man. <laughs> the best is I don't know what happened since COVID. I think something it, during COVID time messed people up and they get a glitch in their brain because more more people come up to me and instead of saying, "Oh, hey, we man, what's up?" they're like, "Hey, don't I know you?" And so it's made it more fun for me that I'm like, "Yeah, and you owe me money." <laughs> and they're like, "Oh." <laughs> bullshit i hate yeah. when people do that shit don't so what do you so think what yeah, do you think like, is behind the bullshit don't i know you do they do do they think that you're somebody else another little person i don't know another midgey another they maybe speaking you. of midgeys would you like a midgey we yeah from a midgey <laughs> sure yeah, there you go they're wow. pretty good this is the most important Speak midgey of my life <laughs> that's that is gonna be the most important <laughs> midgey of your life speaking of midgeys there we go. So the next question <laughs> have you ever been with a midgey what is your definition of a midgey? A midgey is a little person, a midget. Well, if you look it up technically, like a midget, when you look it up, at least in, when I used to, when I looked it up back in the day when I was being called it, it was technically what it is. It's like a petite, a, a person of petite size, like like a jockey. Like yeah. everything's yeah. proportion, yeah. but it's a jockey. So I'm like, why are they calling me midget? <laughs> so I'm not, a, you know, but... I use it in comedy because it's just funny. I do stand-up comedy, and it, it's just funnier to me. And I don't really get offended of the word because back when I grew up, that was the only word there was. Yeah. Now there seems to be, like, six of them. Like, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. So, whatever. But, uh, so we don't... So, technically, like, a midgey is, like, a person of petite size. Like, a jockey, someone that, like, you know, like, they put on the horse. But uh, we are not midgies. We are Akon dwarves, but we just think that we, we, we hype the midgies up because we want sponsorship. Huh. <laughs> and Fair enough. what better That's... sponsorship than fucking Tootsie Roll? Tootsie dude. Roll. If yeah. you guys get sponsored by them, like, it's I'll be done. So it's done. Yeah, we, we yeah. think You've we made it. it. Yeah, we Never mind so. anything else fucking you've ever done in your you life. You might see a midgy commercial on Tootsie, on a, a Tootsie Roll midgy commercial on TV. And you guys are dressed up like those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like asking up, every, like you ever have a midgey? Yeah. That's the new you ever have a midgey. Yeah. And say have you ever been with a midgey? Oh uh, yeah, we we'd probably get ostracized <laughs> by like LPA, but it doesn't matter. Who yeah. cares? We live our own lives. But yeah, so we just kinda use it like our little mini bar, you know. Well back to before Poncho <laughs> cut you off. No, I, I like to divert. Yeah, you did. <laughs> that was a good divert. Like <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> meaning she doesn't want to answer the question. <laughs> I feel like I've always been so like this asexual kind of thing. Like I've never really, I never really post about who I'm with or like. I've seen I, your dude. Well, because you know, you've seen him in real life. Yeah. But like, uh, I don't know. I, I always, people are always like, are you lesbian? Like, are you like. Are you I heard, something? I heard you got it bad at uh, Babes. <laughs> Babes ride. You like what did I? What happened to me? You said that you felt like all the lesbians were just <laughs> after Shut you. The fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard. We were at the shop one day, and you're and it was like right after I Babes, mean, and you're like, wow. I, I put it out there for the chicks. Like I <laughs> fucking love girls. Like I am always like the number one chick supporter. So I, when I'm in situations like that, I think people just are super comfortable with me, you know, yeah. and they just are like, they fuck with me, and they like ask me every question under the sun, and like I love it. Like, I, that's the type of shit, like, I love. And, like, yeah, babes right out. Everyone's kind of gay for the weekend anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, babes right out, Ponch, because I could tell. I could yeah. see your eyes twiddling and all that. It's a f all-female 
uh, moto ride that goes out to different like Palm Springs or wherever out there. And, and it's just all north. chicks. And all it's girls. all chicks. It's the yeah, biggest ladies. meetup of women motorcyclists. Okay. So it's like around 2,000 girls now, I think. Wow. And we camp out for like two nights and it's a whole event. Like, and is everyone on Harleys or like, no, try, like no. different style bikes? Yeah, everything. And all ages and all styles and everything. Do you own a crotch rocket? No, but I road raced. Like a ninja? Like, yeah, that's what I, w I was reading, the road race thing. Yeah, but it was on a Royal Enfield, so it's like a it's like a cafe racer style bike where, yeah, usually when you road race, it is more like a crotch rocket. Did you do that across Canada? Is that the race that I read about? that? You, or not a, a race, it, you did it with your dad or with something? With my dad? No, um, that was just like... I did that when I was a writer. I did an article where me and my dad rode back to our hometown um, and it was sponsored by Harley. So That's so awesome. And then when I showed up at the Harley dealership, they were giving my dad a bike to ride, what? like just for the trip or whatever. And I was going to ride my own bike and they were like, you can ride whatever bike you want. Like we'll lend you one. And I ended up riding a trike. Oh yeah, like you rode a Canada. trike. You rode a trike? Yeah, Harley trike. How was that? <laughs> <laughs> it was like driving a car like you have to like have muscle to like turn you know wider yeah. turns yeah you like usually you counter steer when you go okay. onto an overpass or whatever but with this i was like oh fuck like if you're going too fast you have to like muscle it and when you go over railroad tracks like my ass would fly off the seat like i'd have to like <laughs> hold on <laughs> yeah you couldn't really s well i don't know bad it was up there but you can't split lanes with trikes i'm that too yeah. yeah yeah but you can only do that in california really oh really yeah legally you only can lane split in california and i think one other state maybe now arizona or is arizona illegal um no i think you're right about that yeah. but then the other states they some allow lane filtering which is when you can split lanes to get to the front of a stop sign or a red light but here you can split like on the a freeway anywhere. anytime yeah yeah but that's one of, honestly one of the reasons i moved to california like they let motorcyclists kind of be themselves here yep and it's sick like where i lived for the past five years before i lived here in vancouver like it's no fun city like the i got a ticket for no mirrors on my motorcycle and no chain guard and all these like stupid rules like i could never ride my choppers there wow uh i almost moved up to canada uh in 2018 Oh. And I was driving around BC yeah. and I was driving around different areas looking for places. And I really don't know the difference in speed from kilometers <laughs> to miles per hour. Yeah, typical American. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> and I guess I was like right on the border of speeding, going just the cruising speed I was going. And I went to pass someone and I like sped up. And a cop pulled me over and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like this guy was cruising and I wanted to get it around him. And all of a sudden lights are on. He came by, he, he pulled a, us over and uh, I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize. And, you know, I gave him my license. He looked and then he, he let me go. He didn't give me a ticket. And I was like, whew, didn't want to come back to Canada to go to a court date, you yeah. know? So, yeah, yeah. Out. but it was like 10 miles or 10 kilometers yeah. over the speed limit. And I was like, lights are on. I was like passing a guy. Yeah. It's <laughs> like they're bored or something. Yeah. Tell us about your clothing company that you have. I, I see. Uh, so there was a shirt that said, don't uh, if if you if, if you, you see this. Then she fell off. But no. then you made it. If you see this, yeah. she fell off. Yeah. So that was when, when COVID hit, I kind of wasn't getting jobs writing or riding or whatever. So I always wanted to make that shirt because you see the shirt around. If you can read this, the bitch yeah, fell yeah, off like the, that. That this, shirt was like everywhere. If you go to any motorcycle event. And so I always, you know, I subconsciously would see these things in the motorcycle community and at events and stuff where it never really like pissed me off or anything but you'd kind of always be like Ugh, gross <laughs> well especially being like a hundred percent rider too and builder yeah. like fuck man like yeah that would have pissed me off too shit yeah but you kind of were just like well that's the culture and like that's that has been the culture for a long time like the the chicks are just the old ladies that like ride on the back and are the property of the club and shit you know so anyways yeah i made you that know what shirt that means punch Yes, I do. Yeah, I know. Before I went on this, I'm like, this I is like. I watched Sons of Anarchy, right? <laughs> <laughs> I 
before this, watch, before this watch, interview, he's just watching Sons of I Anarchy. I watch Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> I watch Mayans, dude. <laughs> My favorite show is it? <laughs> we're gonna need to, we're gonna need to get you a bike, punch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now nah, you're not feeling bikes. No, it's just because of I've had three lower back surgeries. My my legs are, and stuff are wonky uh, and like just yeah, yeah all yeah, that. Yeah, I yeah. feel like I I'm not like uh how I used to be where I could just like fall and not get hurt. I think it's just uh it's scary. I, the right. consequences Dude, for me are kind of scary. And lots of people in my community are ex pro skaters and snowboarders. I come from snowboard world. That was what oh, really? I did before this. Of course, Be- Canada. You got you guys got a lot of snow up there. Yeah, where you it's live, like yeah. nothing else to do. But it is kind of like I know it sounds crazy, but it's like a safer alternative to that like same feeling of adrenaline and like feeling cool and like hanging with your friends and yeah. kind of that same like style thing yeah. and. You'd be surprised. And, like, I, you, you know, with skateboarding or snowboarding, like, you fall and you break your arm, like, every couple of years or months or whatever. But with motorcycling, like, you know, it's when well, you fall once, you're just dead. But I think if I ever got into it so I didn't have to use my legs as much, like, to, like, when you stop at a stop sign, you put both your legs down. I think I'd probably do the get a tri bike, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Do something like that. <laughs> sick. We're getting you a trike, buddy. Try bike. If this if this thing takes off, this takes you're getting off. a trike, dude. <laughs> and we're I gonna make to it. And we're gonna make it look like the little red one that every kid used to have. We're gonna paint it the same and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah, a cool. three wheeler. Yeah, and it's small enough that you can lane split on it still. Yeah. yeah. Imagine seeing that in your mirror. You're just like, what the fuck was what that? Is, who's this coming <laughs> behind me? I get those looks all the time right now riding my bike. I bet. I'll be with a group and we're riding and everybody's like, you know, they do this. And then you could tell like big biker dudes don't want to like give the, hey, cool riding with you to someone that looks like they're on a mini bike. Yeah. You, I totally feel it there. But then they're like, wait, what the fuck was well, that? They just went by. Well, at least you're not one of those dudes that, that's on a mini bike, but he's enormous. You're like, <laughs> why are you riding that tiny motorcycle, yes. dude? Yes. yes. There's a lot yeah. of those around here. The Groms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we took a Honda uh, Monkey and just chopped 35 pounds off of it to build my bike. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, and we've changed it up a little bit. They're supposed to only do about 60, 65, and mine has been pinned at 75 to 80. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. So, yep, it's fun. I like it. And she she does have a good point there. It's when you still want that adrenaline rush, but you don't want to go out and throw yourself down at yeah. flight of stairs. Yeah. You can get it from a motorcycle riding. Now, this is probably a very silly, silly question. That's okay. There's no uh, silly questions, bro. It's coming from me, so bear with Bring me. Bring it on. <laughs> so... Two wheels in the bi- back, one wheel in the front, tri bike. Two yeah. wheels in the front, one wheel in the back. Is that a reverse tri bike? Um, they make that actually. I've seen those, and I'm like, what the hell is that thing? Yeah, that's a Can Am Spider. My grandpa actually rides one now because he's like old and kind of doesn't want to, yeah, dr- okay. ride two wheels. But um, they're just like a, I don't know, okay. a bike they make. You can revert that question because it was fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, it's, this is, I usually, everything I do is motorcycle okay. related, you yeah. know? So when I was going on this, I'm like, fuck, I've never really done something where like this, it's not a motorcycle podcast or like yeah. show or something. So like people listening aren't going to know all the terms and stuff. Like, I, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like there's, so this is those good. are questions that That's people probably want to we, ask. We're trying to do with this too, is like teach through humor or just teach in general. Yeah. That's why we're not catering to one audience. Yeah. Right, Jason. we're catering to the world. We're catering the to the world. world, the whole world. And so you, I, uh, you're a journalist. Yeah, is, you still do that. That's mm. is that your main thing? Well, at all, or I still sometimes will okay. do stuff like that. But um, that was my main gig in the beginning because all my girlfriends that were kind of making money off of the whole like motorcycle shit, they were all photographers, and they'd okay. bring me on trips with them, and they'd be making money taking these photos of me wearing this stuff, and I wouldn't be making any money but I'd be away from work. So I'd be like, fuck, I like writing. So like I'll write articles and like pitch them to magazines. So instead of making $0 on a trip, I'd make like 500 bucks or whatever. That's awesome. Was writing, is that what you went to school for? Originally, yes. And then as soon as I was like one year in a university, 
and Instagram started. Yeah. And I started just blowing up on Instagram because of the motorcycle shit. And I switched to business and I ended up getting my business degree because I just like, I correlated everything to being sponsored by snowboarding. I was like, well, I understand how people get sponsors through snowboarding. So like I have this following and I'm not really like an athlete, but I like could rep brands in these magazine articles or on Instagram and like get Absolutely. paid. So I kind of just like started being more businessy and like, yeah. That's, that's really business. cool. Well, you know, you, you get a little older, you got to pay the bills soon. Yeah. And then, yeah. Like I just wanted, I just want to do what I want to do in life. Like I just, every single thing I do is just to continue doing what I like. Mm. What else, what else do you like? So snowboarding, moto, that's what else, are you dude? getting that? No, because you say you want to continue going like what else? What's you know, right? You live in Long Beach. Yeah. You don't you don't surf? Is there surfing? I, in Long I Beach? tried or? when I first okay. moved to California. I surfed a lot, but like it just sucked so bad. Uh. It's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a lot different than snowboarding. I th- yeah. yeah, it totally You're not is. strapped in. It's just hard. <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't <laughs> sexual, dude. I didn't say that. I don't know why you're laughing. That, why that laugh was like, I was like, like I tried to say something No, sexual. I did not laugh at <laughs> he that. He just wants to fuck around. That whenever you see this like, guy's head like around. shake, he's <laughs> laughing. He's just trying not to. Just trying to <laughs> I <laughs> was laughing just because it's like, I, it's, so, like strap on stuff is like to me, like wakeboarding <laughs> sucks. You know, like, but there's a wakeboarding where you're not strapped. Yeah, wake surfing. That's wake surfing. Yeah, yeah. that's rich people shit. <laughs> we used to yeah, you gotta own a fucking <laughs> boat. You gotta that. own a boat. You gotta have gas. Right. Um, no, but oh, but Becky does. I saw recently because I was trying to keep up with the homework too. Uh, she is a blow up kayak <laughs> that she went kayaking with the other day. What in, a, in like a river? <laughs> in the heart. Yeah, in the LA River. I'm in, just fucking. <laughs> In the no, not in the fucking like <laughs> empty ass L.A. Day. River with homeless people <laughs> no. shooting up right there. I am definitely the hobo when it comes to the blow up kayak. All like right. I bought this thing on Amazon for sixty nine dollars <laughs> and I drive my shitty RAV4 to like the Huntington Harbor, which is like all mansions. And I just know the one spot where you can like drop a kayak yeah. in and I just eat spits and drink twisted tea like by myself and like float around and just like chill. It's. it's just like going to the beach, but you're like floating. You know? it, that's cool. My wife just bought two blow up kayaks, and I just oh. constantly try to like get out of it. She's like, always like, "Let's go!" Like kayak? get out. No, get out of like <laughs> get out of doing it. I just pictured. It. Get out of doing it, you know, and be, just because like where we live, it's really hot, and sh- yeah. there's this place called Pyramid Lake that we could go do oh, it yeah. at. It, which would be nice, but I'm like, ah, my my excuse is like, I don't, honey, come on, I don't want to go. We're going to be out in the sun, you know, the sun's just going to beat down yeah. on our necks and we just, <laughs> you can't get out. On, let's do it's it. Let's, let, let's wait till it gets cooler, you know? And by the time it's cool, you're not into it anymore. And then you can't even go in the water to go swim, you know, if you get yeah. cool, like, you know, like it's one yeah. of those places. It's really so hard to go like, pee too. I want to go swimming. Like, you know, I don't want to just come, come down to the beach area. Yeah. Do it down there. I, I need it to be mellow, though. Dude, it's mellow. Waves. The harbors. Yeah. yeah. yeah in okay, the harbors. Cool. Like in the mellow. marinas. Okay, yeah. Cool. Like the, the ca- canals. I just wear one of those, uh, the gardening hats. Yeah. Sun hats, you know, mm-hmm. cover my neck. Or you could just throw an umbrella in the back and have a full umbrella. I don't want to ruin umbrella. my tat, you know. <laughs> 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 he really loves this tat. He right, does. Man. We're twins now. That's I that's need one. So you're super tan, dude. Like, is that a that's lo- honestly? From Long Beach? It's from like, the kayak day. Oh, I was really? I got wasted and ended up being out there for like. Oh, I, I think I was out there for like six hours. Oh, and I didn't my even gosh. realize. It was just when like I was just having a day, you know. Did you go solo? Were you on mushrooms? Yeah, no, I no was not. <laughs> I don't know. No, I was supposed to hang out with my homegirls. She bailed on me, so. That sucks. Do you like doing things by yourself or yeah. do you like doing things more in groups? No, I'm like, I've always been someone who just, I'll go do stuff whether I have someone to do it with or not. Like, Very independent. Yeah. Nice. Like when I first moved to LA, I didn't um, have a social security number yet. Don't. Uh, anyways. Um, <laughs> and I, <laughs> I broke up with my boyfriend of 10 years. One day, the next day I went on Craigslist and I bought a van and the next day I got rid of all my shit. And the day after that, I moved into the van and like drove to California. And I just lived in the van for four months by myself. Like, Do you still have that van? 
No, I sold it because it was just, I didn't really, I needed to buy a car. So you're talking about in Canada, you broke up with your boy boyfriend of 10 years, you bought a van, mm -hmm. you sold all your shit, and you were just like, fuck it, I'm out. Yeah. And is Los Angeles or like Southern California is always a place that you wanted to be? Um, Yeah, I kind of just was tapped out of Canada. Like for what I do, it just, I was I already had worked with all the brands. I already worked with yeah. all the magazines and the cops were pissing me off. All the events I'd put on were like getting shut down or just no one was showing up anymore. Yeah. You, you weren't like, oh shit, South Dakota is like 11 hours away. I'm going there. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, fuck that. <laughs> That's no she, change. Yeah. There's she no wanted change. to come to Hollywood. Yeah. She said, I'm going to Hollywood. It's on. I'm going to be Watch a big out star beaches. in Hollywood. <laughs> yep. No, that was oh. me today, bro. Yeah. On my way here, I'm like, I'm in Hollywood. I'm going to hang out with a celebrity, bro. What the fuck? It happens. <laughs> Shit happens in Hollywood. Yeah. Two celebrities. Yeah. Most Two things celebrity. happen in Hollywood for me. We're I'm all gonna forget about. <laughs> 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 no, skateboard star, bro. You, you I, that was it. before Hollywood, though. I think Hollywood, yeah. like, just, uh, it was, I have an addictive personality, and so Hollywood was, like, difficult for me at first mm. yeah. but punch just put out a well he didn't put it out he's in a recent movie release yeah oh. I, I do i do i do do movies and, and and things like that that's my other what do thing. you do I, in I do it acting oh you acting okay yeah, cool. i'm an actor i'm a thespian <laughs> i always play a dick i'm always a dick in every that. movie mm -hmm. i'm in and i'm such a nice dude but yeah. like for some reason that's easy it's very easy to be an asshole you know <laughs> I love watching your face when he's talking. You're very like. Oh, I laugh. Sometimes he'll be like watching me talk and he'll be like, <laughs> like what is going to come out of this guy's mouth? Please don't say it. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyways. I, I need to, I guess I need to take Jess to your movie now. Yeah. So then I could say, yeah, I went to my buddy's movie and we had a date there. So. Oh, yeah. He won't fall asleep. <laughs> It's a good movie. It's like a Mr. and Mrs. Smith meets Kill Bill. Oh, okay. With like a little bit of gore. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know if it's still in theaters. It was supposed to be in theaters for like two weeks. And uh, that's it. Yeah. So done. What's that it called? It. We're not jackass, dude. We're not there for <laughs> fucking. We're not hanging out in the theater for two months, bro. <laughs> or three months in fucking South America, whatever it is out there. Jeez. Well, that was the only thing getting filmed at that time. Like you yeah, probably. We were, we were the went after covid so we were filming right up to covid we took a week break a week before covid hits where we were gonna have a week off and then like all right we get two more weeks so we oh. thought oh our bodies are gonna be so healed by two weeks and then it turned seven months and paramount said we were the first movie back to film and uh then uh they tested everything like covid testing yeah. and all that with us so yeah, we were the we were the animals for that, and yeah, then makes uh, sense. we got put out there. But um, one of the best times on one of our movies was when the second movie came out. Is one of the better ones. Uh, after it had a long run, there was this movie theater that had dollar nights, and it got it finally. And it was like Jackass two one dollar, <laughs> and I went to the place and I said how much. How many seats is in one theater? And they're like, 250. I'm like, I'll buy 250 tickets because it's 250 bucks. And I'm out. And it was like, right when Instagram started, I put on Instagram, show up and you can be in the theater for free. I thought maybe we would fill a theater. Oh, shit. We filled four theaters. Like, people started lining up super early. The place called me and they're like, hey, we're going to show your movie in four theaters now. There's four. Oh, wow. And they didn't even charge me more. They just, they said, oh my God, we're going to oh, make so much awesome, money man. That's off of popcorn and yeah. drinks and all that. They opened up four more theaters. So I had them start them 15 minutes after each other. And I went in, I'm like, hey, everybody, thanks for coming out. Enjoy. Douche. Went to the next <laughs> one. Hey, everybody, things are good. And it was awesome. Wow, that was, was that in, here? That's some love. Yeah, it was dude. in Whittier. Oh, okay, in Whittier, cool. there was a theater that does. I think it's still there and still does that. Damn. Yeah, it was fun. Cool. So. I was hoping maybe we could do a dollar night if your movie goes there, Punch. Yeah. If it does, let's buy the theater. Oh, let's nice. do it. I know. Shit like that's fun. People yeah. like it. And especially with social media, once you put yeah. it out there, people get excited and they feel like a part of it. Yeah, good promo. 
<laughs> so, um, what's next? Acts. That's you kind of like. That's what I meant by like. You love things. You love what like I things, love things that are exciting in your life. Whatever extreme. And, yeah, stream stuff. <laughs> but what what's next for Becky? She's done motorcycle build. She's got her own clothing line, <laughs> own shop. Um. Well, last year I was the first woman to be invited to build a bike for the biggest chopper show in the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. Born born free. Yes. Nice yeah. work. Um, and it was cool, uh, but then this year they put out their invited builder list again and there wasn't a girl on it. But the thing is, is there's just not a ton of women in this chopper world that are building that style of bike. Like, I get it. So I pitched this idea to Born Free and Harley Davidson and I was like, let's put on just like a women's celebratory like exhibit at events that are already happening so i invite women from that area that have these bikes already either they built them or they ride the shit out of them or they're just cool women in their cells that have these like rad bikes so i've been working with harley now to put this exhibit on at all these different events around the states that's awesome and we built this like cool infrastructure it's like one of the coolest booths at these events and uh, i just get to meet all these women through the internet really who are who have these bikes and then they come and display them for the weekend and they have a sign that kind of shows what they've done with their bike and the story behind it. So I'm trying to grow it and do it. We're doing it at two events this year and then we're going to do it at like three or four that, next that year. That definitely seems sellable. I, I don't see like why someone wouldn't do that, you know? Yeah. And then hopefully it'll encourage more women to like build or just get into customizing bikes and yeah. riding more. And, and all you're all you're really doing is putting out there, putting the word out there of 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 what you're trying to do. But also, you're just going to get more and more people at these events. Yeah, and that's basically what they want. You know. Yeah. The yeah. more people it's come, no the more brainer. money they make. You know, yeah. the tickets they sell. The more tickets they sell, absolutely. Yep. <laughs> money. <laughs> it all goes back to that. So what? What are you, so do you have other sponsorships like besides Harley Davidson? Yeah. What are some of the other ones? Um, that you have? So I'm on yearly contracts with like Bell Helmets, okay. Dunlop Tires, and Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys, which is like I get paid from doing to do events, to post on Instagram, do Instagram takeovers. They just support me with like whatever I want to do. Uh -huh. Like I just bought a bike I'm building to like raffle off on my website and they all kind of like contribute to that just to, I don't know, be a part of it and like let me not have to go work a job, oh, you yeah. know? So I don't know. It's like influencer, I guess, but I never really, Instagram just allows me to be able to keep doing this stuff. So that's kind of what it all ties back to. Like, do you, sorry, do, you do any other platforms besides Instagram? Um, you a YouTuber? You a yeah, I do a little bit of YouTube, but I do TikTok. Like today, like I'll just kind of make little clips of my whole day. And then when this comes out, I'll like put it out and it'll, I don't know. It's just, yeah. it's kind of just for fun. And then I can use that video for Instagram or I whatever. Was, I was reading at one point that you were sponsored by Converse. Were you sponsored by Converse? Um, Converse has sent me shoes every year since I was a snowboarder, actually. But yeah, That's they'll. Nice. I always hit up Converse and be like, yo, I'm doing this trip. Like, can you give me some money? And they'll be <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, Ponch got super excited because he's, a, you get he's, a, he's well, a Converse yeah. guy now. Yeah. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. A, no, I, I'm like you like I like Converse. the way they look with jeans. Yeah. I think they, they're like the best looking shoes with jeans, like whatever color they are. Not shorts. Do you wear shorts, Punch? You do uh, shorts? You're not a shorts guy. I feel naked with shorts. Unless I'm going swimming or something. It's just uh, okay. So your legs look really white. Uh, I, at home, I wear shorts. Like mm. at my pool and stuff. But mm. like. Oh, you got a pool? When I'm a, yeah. Mm. I have a pool. He has a lake. He has a oh. pool. It's not my oh. lake. <laughs> <laughs> it's in your backyard. It's considered. You can see it from our house, though. But that's why we moved up there. We needed yeah. land and we needed space. And we needed something needed worth our dollar. Yeah. No, I'm not going to pay you. it. A million dollars for a one bedroom with no yard, you know, and <sighs> you literally like can grab coffee from your neighbor. Just reach your arm over there and be like, hey, I'm having <laughs> coffee today from your house. <laughs> you didn't want that anymore? No, it's just. Uh, well, wow. how close is your closest neighbor? Probably like, uh, I don't know, like 30 feet away. Like, you know, oh, like nice. just, you know a lot, a like a sack. lot, yeah. like a lot. OK. And we we moved there like right as COVID was happening. So okay. all the interest went down. Mm. And it was just 
good to have that space and that that the the quietness because of like what was happening with COVID. Yeah. You know, it was just people were going crazy. So if it it, it it felt like it wasn't happening up there until like you would go to a grocery store, which yeah. is like damn, that's a good twenty five minutes there. away. Yeah. Yeah, good for you. And then the Rock Inn all was like the bar that's cl- close by to our house or the yeah and. Uh, Apparently, it's like a huge spot for like bikers. You yeah. know, like you see all kinds of different bikers riding there on the weekends. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a bike the rock ride. in. Yeah, the rock in. That's a spot. Hmm. All right. Yeah, I've been there like once, but it's very like well known biker. It's been around bar. for a really long time. Yeah. The roads around there are cool. You ever been to Cook's? Yeah. Cook's Definitely. Cook's, Cook's, Cook's another Corner. Biker destination. Yeah, it's up in Orange County. Okay. Uh, up in the hills. I went there. The first time I went, uh, first time. Trying to go there is when my license plate uh, vibrated <laughs> off. <laughs> the next time I went, uh, as soon as I put my kickstand down, it broke. Oh. What? Yeah, my kickstand broke at Cook's. But they, Did your uh, bike fall over? No. I, I was holding it, and I put my kickstand, and it went, kick! And I'm like, well, uh, I don't know what to do here now. I'm either going to keep riding or what. And one of the guys like, oh, dude, we got you. And they took my bike and they rolled it over and they put it in this little like, I would say it was kind of like a natural gutter. <laughs> and they just leaned the kickstand part on right to there. Oh, yeah. And they're like, you're good. We're going to watch your bike. Go ahead. Go enjoy the show. And I was like, oh, these guys are awesome. So, but my <laughs> kickstand, it's probably most bikes. When your kickstand's down, you can only be in neutral and your bike stays on. And oh. There's like a little like cord thing or whatever that connects, and I had to sticker it and put my kickstand up so I could drive back, so I could ride. Oh yeah, because and it started moving, and my bike would shut down like mid ride. It would just back, burr, and I was like, oh, this is fucked. <laughs> but so then I went back. I took it to um, Aaron, and mm-hmm. I said, Aaron, uh, this thing isn't as tough for this bike. He's like, oh, okay, we'll redo it, and he fixed it. So motorcycle life, motorcycle life back when you were traveling a lot and, and journaling like the trips, like, do you have any crazy stories? Like what, what would be, or is it, too, um, is it what? Have, <laughs> one time, like crazy story. I mean, dude, I have, so, I have lots of stories cause the bikes that I ride on, they're all like hard tail choppers with no front brake. I mean, oh shit. They're all quite old and you know, shitty. <laughs> So lots of the stories are kind of like that where okay. some some shit breaks and you got to prop it up against something or other. But I rode one time from Vancouver, B.C. down every inch of the coast of the Highway 1 to San Felipe, Mexico and back. And I did I did it back by myself. How long was that ride? It took me. Well, I was gone for like 18. I think one way it took me 14 days. Hey, but you were making lots of stops. Well, yeah, because my tank also, my gas tanks, they only can hold like 70 miles worth of gas. And then I can't. That that must have been beautiful, though, down the coast. Holy shit. Was that like during the fall? It was, I did it in June. Okay. Mm -hmm. So coming of summer. Yeah. That sounds fun. It was so fun. I want to do more shit like that, like just chopper trips. Um, I, I I love your hat so much. I can't stop looking at it. And you say, <laughs> you, you, and you say you have every color of that hat? Yeah, I do. Damn, mm-hmm. how many colors do they make? I probably have like 15 of this hat. Yeah, Brixton, if you're listening up, this girl is a huge supporter, Becky here, of your hat. She already owns 15 different colors of your hat. Punch. Yeah. Hook it up. They probably already send her hats. <laughs> <laughs> Send me more. <laughs> send her more and send me some. And Ponch would like a hat. I want to see you wearing yeah. this exact hat on Ponch, the podcast. Ponch wants a hat too. So yeah. send, send Ponch a hat. I have that. It's more of the Paperboy one, but it's Brixton. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I love well, you're going to have to like wear the it on the Blinder show. style. I don't, what's the name for those? I don't know. I'm, I, I wear only like fedoras or like. Fedoras. Captain's hats on, on boats and stuff. Mm. So. I don't know. I don't know the names. There's <laughs> it's hard to find like a, a good hat for like little people. Why? Like for at least our dwarfism, Akon, we have huge heads, you know, Big so noggins. Like, like, you know, like this thing is like really oh, yeah. opened up. What size like helmet? Fi- I don't like fitter hats. I'm a seven, five, eights. Yeah. Oh. Seven, three quarters, seven, five, eights. Yeah, that's oh, huge, yeah. huge. Yeah. <laughs> Melon, big dog. <laughs> 
<laughs> but the paperboy hats look really good. Yeah. And the fedoras look pretty good. I love fedoras. <laughs> yeah. I love fedoras. <laughs> says no one ever. <laughs> The only people that love really? fedoras. Really, no one ever says Who the fuck them? likes fedoras, bro? Douchebags. Wow. <laughs> no, no, wow. Besides you. Wow. Your face just looks so pissed. He's like, did you really just say that? Brixton, don't send this dude to hell. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Brixton <laughs> makes fedoras. They're going to be bummed, too. No, yeah. I, I just know a few people besides you. I, I've never seen you in a fedora, man. You yeah. probably look super nice Maybe like handsome. 10 years ago or something. <laughs> but the dudes that I've seen in fedoras are, you know, have been kind of douchey. Yeah. I'm wearing a, a little fedora fucking next feather. I'm like, come <laughs> I'm on. wearing a fedora next yeah, week. I for here. sure are. I think I might even put a <laughs> Do not suit ever on. wear a fedora here. Oh, I'm wearing one. I might even just wear it forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Gonna turn it up. Bury you in a fedora. Yep. <laughs> Jesus, it went he can't down. shake it off. He's it went like, down this. No, I'm fine. <laughs> it doesn't affect me at all. Uh, it no. doesn't bother me that you don't like fedoras. <laughs> <laughs> um, any okay? Oh, I know what I wanted to ask. It made me think in the last question. Have you ever moto camped? Like just yeah. you and your motorcycle. That's oh, yeah. it, and just bags or whatever. Yeah. And, yeah, one time I did like five days around or seven days or something around Utah. I just have always wanted to see Utah. So I just that went by myself. That must have been a fun ride. Yeah. It was during COVID too when you weren't supposed to do that. But like I just didn't talk to anybody. I didn't those, eat, eat at restaurants or nothing. I just like camped. Those are the best times. That's when mid-COVID is uh, when I was living the van life. Oh, yeah. And I loved it. It was w awesome. Were you just around? He like where'd you go? I went, uh, I started off, when I got my van, I started in Arkansas. Oh. And, yeah, I went Is to, that where you bought it? Uh-huh, the first one. Oh. My first big, the big black one. And then I had that for seven months, sold it, and I got my tan one that's mm. uh, short roof. Because oh, okay. I didn't need that much, and I, and I wanted to lessen it. I had all, like, shower, toilet, all that, and I'm like, I don't need all this. Yeah. And you figure it out, and you figure out what you need, and then I would just cruise... And I stayed a couple times, like, in front of skate parks. Oh, yeah. And then would wake up and skate. And what the funniest one, I think it was up near Monterey, California, or Santa Cruz, California. I stayed in front of a skate park, and I slept in my van. So I woke up, I made coffee, and I realized two dudes were camping in the skate bowl. And since the sun started coming up, they were waking up at the same time. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, this is two completely different worlds yeah. happening right now, but here to do the same thing. Yeah. It's one of the funnest days. They were like, oh, you stayed there? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you guys. So it was fun. It was a good time. So I liked it. I read that you uh, you did the Norman Rita's show, Ride. Yeah. And, and you and you rode all the way, what, to Uduwai? Or, um, or? They, I was living in my van at that time. And I got a te uh, DM from the producer of that show. And she was like, yo. How did you know them? I didn't. They messaged me on Instagram. They slid oh, into her DM. Yeah. And I was. Oh, from all your pictures and all the stuff. Yeah. yeah. So Norman uh, followed me on Instagram for a long time. Because he's. Was that weird? Like when uh, you're like, you're like. Honestly, dude, I never. Kid, dude like dude from fucking walking. My little sister was like tripping on it for a long time. But I, I never really like it. watched the show or anything. Uh. Um, <laughs> anyways. Then she called me. She's like, can we call you? They called me and she was like, can you fly to Uruguay on Tuesday? And I was like three days from the what I was doing. And I was like, where is that? Like, is that like in Africa? And oh. I was like, I don't fucking know where that is. And uh, they picked me up like in some fancy ass car from my van. Wow. And I spent five days with Norman. He's just like, like a big brother vibe. Yeah. Um, and we just traveled around Uruguay and people there were so stoked to see him. And it was kind of crazy at times. But yeah, we ate really good meals and it was super fancy. And then we had like bodyguards and shit. And then we get back to L.A. and they dropped me back off in my van. And I like went to Subway and got a sub. And I was just like, whoa, what I love the Subway. fuck just happened? Yeah, like, no, I bet, so man. And, and I was reading that it, it, it kind of revived your, your, your love of, of building bikes and riding. Um, well, yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, it was like a crazy experience ever. I was like in South America with Norman Reedus riding and. And it was just you and him riding together? 
Yeah, but obviously we have a whole the camera team crew and, and all stuff, that stuff. But th yeah, and there's even one dude on a motorcycle with cameras all on his bike, and they get he gets real close to you, and this, these cameras like move around and get in that your face. That must have been a great experience. And we have uh, microphones in our helmets, so him and I talk to each other all day, every oh, day. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Cena's. Or Santa, yeah, whatever it's uh, I don't know, dude. It's some crazy like movie shit. Oh, dang. Yeah. And so they were listening to us in the van too. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, it was kind of cool, but it also is just weird because I'm I like riding because you can tune all that shit out and just go. Yeah, and then I'd probably I'd just be singing something, and then Norman Reedus <laughs> is like, "Bro, what the fuck are you saying?" Oh, like, wow. uh, we can't use that song. It's not. It's trademarked. And yeah. Now we can't use the footage because uh, Becky was singing on. Do you the do you listen to music while you're riding? Yeah. 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 So it's in, in into your helmet. Um. Yeah, I have like a system. Or sometimes I just put my AirPods in. Because there's those dudes that sometimes pull up in their motorcycles. Oh, I do that sometimes too. Fucking the music so loud. Yeah. I don't understand how they have it. It's like customized to yeah. just like be a sound stage. I yeah. think it's rad. I, yeah. like when I see dudes roll up like that, I'm like, they're in their own world <laughs> yeah. and they are loving and it. And they right don't now. give a fuck. Yeah, they're living that, like that's best life right now. Yeah, I love yeah. just playing like the girliest music on there. <laughs> so what what is your what is your music? Oh, I just taste? listen to the worst music. Like I never You, you seem like a Gwen Stefani. Yeah, I love girl. Gwen yeah. Stefani. I just grew up with like Avril Lavigne and Blink-182 and yeah. like shit like that. I never really had much influence from like concerts or family or nothing like that like the dumb and dumb sound dumb and dumber <laughs> soundtrack was like the only music that was played in my house oh, that's like, the first time i've ever heard anybody say that soundtrack like, like yeah for real what is it like yeah, you know because probably if you're like a huge dumb and dumber fan when you listen to the soundtrack it reminds you of the movies are oh, this is when that happened or this yeah. is the road trip or this is yeah yeah yeah, no, my dad would just play a lot of Bob Marley and like, I don't know. I just didn't have much music influence. Bob and like, Marley's good though. Yeah, I'm, you know, just basic stuff. So, yeah. but I don't know. Yeah. You a Bob Marley fan, Punch? Yes. I am. I loved Bob Marley. You were stoner for a while. Yeah, I was huge. Yeah, that's and, uh, why I get smoking up the pot. <laughs> <laughs> that is one thing I that will not dumbest. do. <laughs> no, I, I, I loved it. I did it for a long time from like the age of 13 till I was like 35 or 36. Like smoke weed every day? Yeah, pretty much. It was, smoke weed it was every just, day. uh, but then it kind of got to a point where like, like, I don't know. The weed just got crazy. Once it got legalized, oh, yeah. it just got like, like you're almost like tripping on some of this shit. And I don't know. It just got too much for me. And I just felt like, I don't think I could get much higher than what I've been. So I, I stopped. Yeah. Four, six, bro. <laughs> point five, four, six, <laughs> point five. I had to go to the hospital once for smoking weed. Really? No yeah. one goes to the hospital for smoking weed. I did. Weed. I did. Why would you go? Paranoid? To Paranoid? No, you dude. You dying? I, I think something happened where it like, I couldn't move. Oh, like, oh, that's getting stoned. You got stoned. Like, you got straight stoned. <laughs> stoned. Like, the paramedics were giving me, like, fucking, so like, yeah. my, wife, my wife and my wife, like, um, my parents were huge weed smokers. We, we They were farmers, my, my whole family. And uh, I took my wife up to meet them. And my mother had made baked brownies. You know, my mother is, like, eating these brownies like they're just, like, no. candy, you know? And she's like, do you want a piece? To my wife, and she's like, yeah. My wife took a little quarter of a whole piece. And, like, two hours later, she's like, oh, I feel like I'm dying. Call the ambulance. <laughs> yeah. I got to go yeah. to the hospital. I'm going to die right now. I'm like, no. She's like, I'm ODing. I'm like, no one ODs on weed. No, I've done Calm it. down. I've, done it. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've been there twice. Yeah, twice. So I mean, like, to take know me someone to the else hospital. that's been there, like, I guess it's true. <laughs> oh, yeah. Edible or uh, inhale? Neither. You didn't. Oh, oh, you. oh, I thought you were asking what I like. It, no, no, I it was both uh, like smoking. Oh, you, you see, so you inhaled both times. Yeah. And you freaked out. And was yeah. Like, but one time, like the first time when I went to the hospital, like they were giving medic, they were giving me like pressure points, like, you know, to like pain points on your toes and on your chest and stuff to like snap you out of it. And I couldn't feel a thing. Oh, it was. Shit. Yeah. Something happened. I don't know. I clonked my head the day before. So who knows? Maybe it's like a concussion that happened from the day before yeah. or something. And add the weed. Yeah. The only couple of times I've been like contact hide once 
with Steve-O. No, I smoked weed with Steve-O. Steve-O always was a stoner. And he goes, dude, we got I want to get high with you. I got high and we went to a club and he said, I just sat on the couch and just laughed at everything the whole time but didn't move. <laughs> so it was one of the funnest times. And another time recently I smoked a little with a friend and we went to uh, this restaurant called the A Fancy Steakhouse. And it's like old school grandfather <laughs> style. And we were in there, and next thing you know, we're talking about, like, wow, the carpet design is pretty, f it's really good here. And it goes well with the walls and the ceiling. Man, this place is really good. <laughs> the waitress came over, she goes, what are you guys talking about? We're like, man, this, this restaurant, the design layout. And she's like, okay. You guys were high. <laughs> oh, we were high as fuck, dude. It was funny. Yeah. Uh, I'm like I my family is like so not you know super Christian like all my grandparents are all still together my parents are still together like everyone in my family is just like pretty PG so they're kind of religious yeah kind of yeah. yeah Bible thumpers church goers yeah just like church goers okay like you know middle of Canada type thing yeah. grew up going to church and stuff so yeah like sometimes on things like this I'm like oh I want to tell the story but I'm not gonna. <laughs> What? Like, tell one. You can tell one. Well, I already did. I don't know if half my family knows about the weed going to the hospital thing. But oh. I did. I was not shit after that for a while. Yeah. I Did you? Did it make you stop? Yeah. You but I tried this. again. It was only two years ago, or not even maybe a year ago, when I was trying to smoke it to go to sleep. I was trying to get back into the a weed. Lot of yeah. A lot like of you people do that. You got to do that sativa yeah. for that. A lot of people do that. I, it was. Okay. And I was, like, saying to Cody, like, Take me to the hospital. I'm having psychosis. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and now all my friends make fun of me. They're always like, oh, she's having psychosis. Oh. And it's funny. That's like the tip. Like, that's like the typical reaction of when you're high as hell. Yeah. And like you're having those fucking panics. Like your buddies or your friend are just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wish I was as high as you. Yeah. Like, I want to feel that. <laughs> Way to go. Why did it get you and not me? That's why I, I, I liked smoking it because when I smoked it, at least like you would smoke or take a bong rip and then you would like cough it out and blow it out and you'd be like, okay, I'm high. When you took the edibles for it, you That's take so it, you scary. kind of forget about it. And then all of a sudden, like an hour later, you're just like, what, what, is, what is happening? Like, like my heart <laughs> is really beating really fast. <laughs> Your <laughs> listeners are probably all like, all like jackass fans that are like funny and badass. And we're like, we're scared of weed. <laughs> it's all right. It's fine. Yeah. It's a good time. Oh, yeah, I am. I'm scared of weed. So scared. But mushrooms you're cool with? Yeah. I'm afraid of mushrooms. Well, just like I've never done much. I just do a little tiny bite. And then all of a sudden you're like, well, why do I feel so like happy? Yeah. I just, just don't. That. I just don't want to. I don't know where I'm going to go on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think maybe the earth will go square to me. I'll be like, whoa, the earth's square. <laughs> <laughs> we should have a mushroom party. Me, Roland. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus. That would be crazy. <laughs> But Ponch has to be involved too. No, like, no, he's coming. Yeah, I don't. I'll, I'll come watch you guys. I, I can't do mushrooms. Okay, you can't come then. You Why? have. You, you can only come if you do. It. I, I, those hallucinogenic happened, drugs dude? aren't for me. What happened? No, dude? I, I no. I, it's from. I, I never did mushrooms, or I did mushrooms a few times, and then acid like a couple times. Are yeah. you sober? Yeah, I'm sober now. He's but very like, sober. I was. Uh, yeah, the the the, the 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 hallucinogens, the psychedelics, I never really fucked with because yeah. that makes me feel like how you feel on weed. Yeah, like I'm like, yeah. why why do I want to feel like this? Yeah, this is no fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're we on this topic. Speaking of no fun, <laughs> it's time that uh, we might have to say goodbye to our listeners. Oh. We put our time in. The first thing we want to do is thank our guest, yeah, Becky Gable. Thank you guys for having me, uh, Axel. Thank you. Motorcyclist, <laughs> kick asses, whatever. Snowboarder. Snowboarder. Journalist. Wow. Journalist. Influencer. Keep it going. He, he did his homework well. Uh, so, <laughs> thanks, so Beck, for coming out. Yeah, I appreciate if you, it. If you want to take anything from our mini bar, we have we have back stock on it. And uh, yeah, I thought we were gonna like drink all these or something. No, like well, Ponch is sober, so oh, like your poser. <laughs> those those are little moonshines. I'm a quitter. <laughs> <laughs> those are those are wee moonshines. Oh, yeah. but if you want to yeah. plug anything in, like yeah. you know, like um, I don't know where yeah. to find you. 
you know? Yeah, my website is actually, it's axel.com. That's the same as my Instagram. And my brand is co.axel on Instagram, so. And what's what was the event that you're trying to? That's Axel's Hideout. Axel's Hideout. Yeah, and, and actually the next one we're doing is at the end of October. That's at perfect. Born that's Free, perfect. Texas. So there we go. that's coming up. Yeah. yeah. If this, this episode airs just in definitely time be out by then. Yeah, by it's coming up. Yeah. Perfect. So we'll be out oh. there in Texas at Born Free. With a bunch of girls. I already invited them all. So oh, there you go. Yeah. And we want to thank Def Noodle once again for having us out here. Thank giving you, us Def the Noodle. space yeah. to make it our place. Yeah. Little revolution. Yoo-hoo! Woo! Woo!